Hey there, first graders. We are going to be moving into learning about something new today. Very exciting. For Math Module 5, Lesson 10, we're going to be telling time. So today's learning goal, I can construct a clock and tell time to the hour on an analog clock and a digital clock. So first, let's talk about the difference between an analog clock and a digital clock. This is what an analog clock looks like. This is the typical type of clock that you would see hanging on the wall or um, on a watch. Um, these, this is the traditional type of clock. And then a digital clock looks like this. It's where you see the numbers um, laid out for you. You would see it like on an oven or a microwave in a car, um, places like that. So in your packet, you have a clock um, template that looks like this. So what you're going to do um, is we're going to use this clock template today to make our own clocks and then start telling time together. So the first thing I want you to do is take a look at this big circle here and all the dots and spaces and pieces and think about what you notice. For example, something that I notice is that um, it has uh, several dotted lines and then you can see the faded out gray lines that are not dotted around. Um, I'm going to give you a minute to take a look at your clock and see if you notice um, anything else about it. Now, something I hope that you noticed is that it has um, those dotted lines are used to break your clock into equal pieces. Now, we've been working with breaking shapes apart into equal pieces. This has equal pieces. We just don't know how many yet. So what we're going to do is start at the top. I want you to put your finger at the top of your clock up here, and then we're going to trace around each piece with our finger to count and find out how many equal pieces there are on this clock. And as we're counting, I'm gonna be writing numbers on each line on my clock. So start at the top, trace it around one, trace it again, two, three, keep going, four, five, Six, it looks like we're about halfway there and we have six equal pieces. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So we have 12 equal pieces on our clock. And now you can see that we filled in the numbers just like a regular clock would look. Now, you also have two hands on your paper. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pair of scissors, you're gonna cut all the way around your clock, around this big, bold, black line. Don't cut any of the other lines, just this big, bold, black line. And then I also want you to cut out those two arrows that are for the clock hands. Now, there are two different clock hands, we call them hands, and those are the arrows. There's the hour hand, which is the smaller hand, and then there's the minute hand, which is the larger hand. So here is my minute hand. Now you're gonna cut out your minute hand, and then you can place it so that it is pointing up at the 12. Now, when the minute hand, that's the longer one, is pointing at the 12, that means that it is at exactly the hour mark, okay? So that minute hand is going to be at the 12th anytime it is an exact hour. Then we have our hour hand, which is the smaller hand. For this lesson, our minute hand is going to stay exactly where it is. It's not going to move away from that 12, but the hour hand will change. What number is the hour hand pointing at right now? It's pointing at the three. 
which means since the hour hand is pointing at the three and the minute hand is pointing straight up to the 12, that means that it is three o'clock, three o'clock. That's what we say when it is an exact hour, okay? And when the minute hand is pointing at that 12, it is always gonna be o'clock. So when we write three o'clock, we would write it just like you would see on a digital clock where you have the three, the hour goes first, then you have the colon in the middle, and then two zeros tell you that the um, minute is at the exact hour. So if the hour hand is pointing at the three, the minute hand is pointing at the 12, that means that it is three o'clock. All right, so I'm gonna give you a few different times and I want you to think about um, how you would show that on your clock, how you would show that time. Now remember, all of these are exact hours, which means our minute hand is always going to stay on the 12. When the minute hand is on the 12, that's how we know it is an exact hour. So what time does this digital clock want us to show? You should have said 10 o'clock, all right? So we know that our minute hand is gonna stay on that 12, because it's o'clock. But where are we going to put our hour hand? We're gonna point our hour hand to the 10. You can see if the hour hand is pointing to the 10 and the minute hand is pointing up, now we are showing the time that says 10 o'clock. Very good, let's do another. What time does this clock want us to show? Six o'clock, very good. So where is our minute hand going to be? The minute hand should stay at the 12. For six o'clock, where do I put my hour hand? pointing directly down to the number six. So if my clock looks like this, then it is six o'clock. All right, let's do another. What time does this clock want us to show? This clock would like for us to show 12 o'clock. So where should our minute hand be facing? That's right, it's always gonna be on that 12 for o'clock. But where is the hour hand gonna be facing? The hour hand is also going to be facing the 12 to show 12 o'clock. The minute and hour hand are on top of each other to show 12 o'clock. Now, it's gonna be 12 o'clock twice during a day. It's 12 o'clock at midnight in the middle of the night. And then the hour hand's going to go around. It'll be 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Hopefully you're asleep for all of those hours. And then we had 7 a.m., that's 7 in the morning. That's right around the time that you would wake up for school to get ready. 8 a.m., our morning announcements right now are at 9 a.m. Then we would have 10 o'clock, then we would have 11 o'clock, and then we would get back to the 12, and that would be noon. So it'd be right in the middle of the day, right around when we eat lunch. Then the clock, the hour hand, is going to go all the way around one more time during a day. It goes around twice during every single day to get from midnight to noon, and then from noon back to midnight. All right, so now that you know how to tell time to the hour, it's your turn. And you're gonna complete your problem set using your new knowledge of telling time. You're going to be looking at some clocks and matching them. You're going to be writing the time that shows. Now remember, when we tell time to the hour, we're looking at that smaller hand because when it's to the hour, the minute hand is always going to be facing the 12. All right, friends, good luck.